We're not here to talk about the top 10. We're not here to talk about the hot 10. We're going to talk about three hot picks and three cold picks. Three up and three down starts now. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack DeMeo with Superman's Comics, amplifying your comic collection through integrity and community. And in this video, we're giving you three hot and three cold comic book market trends for the week, starting with Batman Beyond Keys. They are definitely on the up right now. Wouldn't you say so, Jack? Definitely. Batman Beyond number 37 was one of the hottest books last week for New Comic Book Day. We talked about it on the Bolo Show, the first full appearance of Batwoman Beyond, and that trend has spread to other books. We are seeing Batman Beyond number one hit some recent record highs with sales trending to about $100. We're seeing it spill out into other first appearances as well. Batman Beyond Unlimited number 18, the first appearance of Batgirl Beyond is suddenly trending towards about a $15 book. And tying into Batman Beyond 37, we're seeing the Volume 1 Batman Beyond number 3, the first appearance of Blight, who seems to be the new big bad heading back to the Batman Beyond universe, hitting as much as $50. But one book of value that I would pay attention to, because you know how I feel about cameos and first full appearances, is that Batman Beyond 36. Batwoman Beyond cameos in that issue, and that book is still selling for cover price. And it's also important to remember Batman Beyond number one has that regular issue, but there's also a free comic book day edition. So whether you want that or not, be aware, make sure you're getting the book that you want, but I would pick up that free comic book day edition as well. The next trend we're seeing on a huge upside right now is everything Darkhawk. Whether it's Guardians of the Galaxy related or not, we are seeing an uptick in Darkhawk books. What do you have to say about that, Jack? Well, first off, Darkhawk is my favorite character. I've mentioned it before on the channel, so I'm excited to talk about it. But Darkhawk has been on the upswing for a couple reasons. First off, like you mentioned, Guardians of the Galaxy movie rumors. That's been going on since Guardians of the Galaxy 1. But also, Darkhawk is firmly a member of Donny Cates' Guardians of the Galaxy run, and that has brought the character a lot more attention. Now, Darkhawk number one has seen prices rise to as much as $30 of late. Now, it's important to note that there are a plethora of copies out there being that that book comes from the 90s. So I would be on the lookout for those newsstand editions. Also, check out Marvel Age 97. That is the true first appearance of Darkhawk with a preview and a cover appearance of the character in that book. Another thing to pay attention to is Darkhawk number 51. That was from that Marvel Legacy relaunch one-shot series. There is a 1 in 25 Dan Mora variant that's currently selling below ratio that I think is getting overlooked. And if you're hitting those back issue bins and you're looking for Darkhawk books, I would also look out for that Venom storyline around 13, 14, as well as those late issues. Savvy collectors and resellers have paid attention to those late issues for a number of years, and they trade for premium prices. Yeah, the good thing about later issues is usually the print runs a little bit smaller on those, but no doubt we're seeing that rise in Darkhawk. That's why it's on the list this week. We have Watchmen, which is the third property on the rise this week whether it's time back to those old books or it has something to do with this new HBO show or seeing Watchmen books. I think they were kind of always in popularity, but you saw the, the normal cycle where the books came down. But with that show back and garnering some more interest, I'm starting to see some of those books rise. But you probably have more information on this also, Jack. Yeah, you see, Watchmen started to come kind of on the tip of collector's tongues once the Doomsday Clock miniseries was announced, and we started to see these characters possibly getting integrated into the DC universe. Now, that hasn't really turned out the way I think a lot of people expected, but you mentioned it, that HBO Watchmen series has a lot of people who may not be familiar with Watchmen suddenly paying attention, and we're seeing that with eBay sales totals. First off, we're seeing Watchmen number one hit some serious numbers. We've seen sales as high as $90 to $100, and it's been a while since Watchmen number one has commanded that kind of price. More importantly, we're seeing issues number two through 12 just sell and sell well into the double digits. It seems like new collectors are out there putting together this original Alan Moore classic, and that is good to see. Also, we're noticing that second print going for about $15 to $20, and that was a book that previously wasn't garnering a whole lot of interest. Also, another thing is the Before Watchmen series. Those were long considered a big failure, but people are starting to pick those up. Now, they're not getting big money, and the variants are still kind of undervalued, but the point is we're seeing interest, and that's the point of this show and this list, is we're seeing these things on the upswing. Yeah, and I think it's also a good thing to know that the Watchmen show doesn't really, it ties into the Watchmen universe, but it doesn't really capture 
material from the specific comic books. So it's good to see books rise in value just because of the show alone based off of other material. So we just gave you the three hottest market trends this week, but unfortunately, what goes up must also come down. So now we're going to hit you with those three cold trends. And the first one we're going to talk about is Shiri from the Black Panther universe. That's right. And I think this one, Brian, is indicative of the spec cycle that you and I discuss on our various programs here on the Simplements Comics YouTube channel. The Black Panther movie is kind of a ways away and both directions. We're a ways from the first movie and we're a ways away from the second movie. So it's really not being paid attention to by collectors and speculators alike. And I think that that will change in the future. We're seeing the first appearance of Shuri dip to like some lows, copies selling for as low as $10. And Baltimore Comic Con, where you and I just were, I saw some copies in a $5 bin and that really blows my mind. We're also seeing the first appearance of Shuri as Black Panther, a book that was widely speculated on, starting to seriously dip. And those Shuri solo series variants that had a lot of attention on them when that series was released, they're really not selling at all or selling for much money. Right. Now, that J. Scott Campbell variant, you're never going to see really dip because that's one of those outlier books that's always going to be there. But if I'm looking to buy books, I'm going to be picking up some of these Shuri books because that character and the actress that was playing her in the MCU is phenomenal. So they're definitely going to be in the three up portion of this video at a future date. We had some of that Batman universe on the upward trend, but we also going to have some on the downward trend. And we're talking Damian Wayne right now. That's right. There's two things, Brian, you and I agree about, about the DC universe. We love Green Lantern and we both feel that Damian Wayne is one of the best investment pickups that there is. But it seems like a lot of the attention going in all kinds of other directions in the market has Damian weight prices kind of slowing down. And I was really shocked when I saw that that Batman 655 Vancouver variant that at one point was $150 to $200 with a bullet on it. The last sale was only $69 plus shipping. Now, the one before that hit $100, but it just goes to show you that the prices are kind of unstable with that book. Also, the 655 cover A. That has been selling recently for under $20. We're also seeing that 656, which some people like better as the first low appearance, consistently sell for about $10 to $15. And even that 666, that Damian Wayne is Batman book, now selling for around $20. These prices, while respectable, are far less than they have been going for in recent memory. And I think they provide some great buying opportunities. I agree. Big fan of Damian Wayne. One of my favorite reads in DC is also the Super Sons. I don't understand why that doesn't get as enough as attention. Either way, fantastic read to me. That's why I continue to pick those up, especially when the new series comes out. They don't tend to last very long. They don't have that many issues. But that is one team, Super Sons, if you want to call them a team. Someone asked me what's a fun book to read. I always go back to that one. And it's easy where you could see them do darker type stories. And I think that's going to come at some point. But no doubt right now, we're starting to see a little decline in Damian Wayne. Then the third topic we're seeing on a downward trend right now is Suicide Squad. Those books, they were hot a few years ago when that first book came out. They kind of picked up a little bit of steam when James Gunn was announced as director and started announcing. The problem was, there's a lot of stuff he was announcing during this, and I'll let Jack get into that in a minute. I think, though, once the trailer comes out and you get more buzz around this new movie, you're going to see those take another uptick. But Jack, tell us more about Suicide Squad being down. Yeah, you know, I think it's a couple things, Brian. I think first off, it's the fact that James Gunn mentioned that a lot of these characters in his movie, they're going to die. Secondly, um, we expected to see kind of some heat behind these, these properties once some of this casting got announced. John Cena, Pete Davidson, Idris Elba. These are kind of mainstream major actors, but with so many actors getting announced at once and so many first appearances for collectors to chase, I think people have been kind of skittish about this one. And we're not even seeing the like major no-brainer keys like Legends number one, the first appearance of Amanda Waller, or Legends number three, the first appearance of the modern Suicide Squad take off. These books are still massively depressed value. Now there's a lot of buying opportunity here. I personally like Blue Beetle number three, that first appearance of John Cena's character. I got to imagine John Cena is going to play a major role, but who knows? He could die right off the bat. So this is one of those things that you've got to be careful for, but these books are just dirt cheap right now. Even Suicide Squad number one from 1987. I think another thing that ties into this is a lot of the characters that were in the first Suicide Squad 
aren't in the second one. So do people want to invest into certain characters? Well, they don't know, like you said, if they're going to die, if they're going to be around for another movie, how long are they going to stick around? But safe to say, I think once a trailer comes out, you're going to see some of these books pop. And then that way we might be talking about it on the three out portion of this video. Yeah, I think this is a burning turn for speculators, Brian, and probably one to be cautious for if you're just a collector looking for these keys. So there it is, guys. Three up, three down. This is going to be a new weekly video series right here on Superman's Comics. Hot and cold market trends, but we also have some other new content coming up, don't we, Jack? That's right, Brian. We are excited to bring, by popular demand, the back issue Bolo Show to the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. We are going to bring you five back issues to be on the lookout for when you're hunting in those long boxes at your LCS or at those local conventions. And that show will debut immediately following the regular Bolo Show on Thursday nights. So click that thumbs up button if you like this content. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing so that way you won't miss any of this future content.